you have to have an APR um, downpipe. Oh, okay. To do it. So if you can find a used one, yeah. and then you, you got to give them like the serial number or code or whatever on the really? downpipe, then they'll sell you the tune. But really? I think it's an EPA thing. Oh, okay. So I think they're that not allowed sense. to sell it anymore. For, that makes sense. But on every, I mean, when we're all buying these performance parts, right. you, you all, it all says like for track use only. Right. Right. So, Which is all we're using it for. So. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Third Pedal Podcast, episode number nine. 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 Long time coming. But we're back. Yeah, it's been like six months since we've recorded. Um, a lot of differences. You have an addition to your family now, which is super exciting. Yes. Daughter was born <laughs> shortly after the last episode, You're actually. Like, I didn't want to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, she was born right after the last episode. Yeah. So it kind of put a halt to stuff. Yep. And then life and holidays and yeah. all oh, yeah, that other stuff. stuff. So, so we're, we're excited back. to be back. We have a way more solid um, plan as far as when we're going to shoot and stuff this year. Yep. So, um, so definitely can expect new episodes every Monday. Um, we're going to be releasing video again, too. We took a break last time because we thought that wasn't going to be in the cards, but we yep. have a better studio set up here at Zach's new house. Nobody and... missed this. <laughs> yeah, Not but... necessarily this. <laughs> um, especially not Tyler because he's not here. <laughs> yeah. No, we missed Tyler. He's couldn't, fired. Couldn't work out today for him to come join us, but uh, he'll be joining back whenever he can. Stuff's been busy with uh, his little kiddo, too. But, yep. um, but yeah, excited to get back at this and get talking about cars some more we've uh we've been our group chat with each other has been ridiculous because there's been so many uh, so many memes and so many videos going back and forth where we're like all right we got to start we got to start doing stuff what are you worried the camera dies no no no, we're good oh okay sorry <laughs> it's such a like, small hey, screen i'm trying to we see had so many technical difficulties today yeah. the other mics we were using died we lost the power supply for one of the interfaces it's yep. been going great but going great but now we're cruising so, so we'll, anyway. be, we'll probably be paranoid the whole time that none of this is being recorded <laughs> yeah. and we're just having an exaggerated conversation with ourselves <laughs> facing this way for some yeah. reason so if you see us doing this that's we're trying to see if it's still recording but it is so anywho Liquid swap. Um, <laughs> there, we're right. gonna we're also gonna see how many times we grabbed the wrong water bottle yes um okay so this week we thought it'd be cool to come back uh, there's been a lot of uh because we're not normal people there's been a lot of changes in our cars because good enough <laughs> is never. never um so yeah i don't know do you want to start or do you want me to with the new you stuff? have the most changes <laughs> yeah since the last time so yes. tell us about this is your true. new well new to you yeah car since the last time yeah so new... I, I probably last we talked a little bit about obviously the porsche mm -hmm. that's been around always going to be around yeah probably. oh yeah always so gonna have that got thing. The porsche yeah, i think we talked about the jeep a lit did we talk about restoring it or was that after i, I don't remember because i was doing a lot of i like repainted the whole front end yeah um, the fenders and all that stuff and i think that's where we were because we just bought the forester um okay you shortly that before, right before. Yeah, or it was a couple episodes before, but that was kind of the newest thing. So we were finally down to three cars because we sold the other Jeep that we had. Yep. Um, we we're doing that. So um, my father-in-law, I'm very, very blessed. My father-in-law has had a uh, 2002 WRX, a bug eye, since I think he got it 2005 or six, something like that. He's had it for a really long time. And um, this was like his car. Like he got He's like second owner or something, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he he got it, and then right shortly after he bought it, he did a ton of modifications to it. So he um he did the I think it's the Cobb Stage Three kit. So it's basically like an STI now. Mm -hmm. Um, but he he's had that thing since then, and drove it every day to work. Loved the thing, and then recently he upgraded to an Audi S6, a newer one, 2017. Is that what I told you? I can't remember what year. It Something is. like that. Um, sorry, Lewis. Is it the supercharged V6 or is it the twin turbo? Twin turbo V8. So I don't know what gender. I think that's 2017. Yeah, I think Maybe. so. That's one of the newer ones. 16 or 17. But yep. anyway. So he upgraded to that. Um, WRX has kind of been sitting because he's been uh, focusing his attention on that. And as soon as I had sold the Jeep, um, he had kind of talked to me. He was like, hey, I want I want to pass this car along to you because um, in in his family, he's had like other relatives pass along cars to him. It's kind of been like a cool legacy thing in, in their family. Mm -hmm. And him and I have shared a lot of cool moments with the WRX. Um, when we replaced the clutch is when I asked if I could marry Chloe is when we were oh, doing that whole job. That's um, awesome. So there's been a lot of like a lot of emotional connection that way. So he kind of talked to me about it in the middle of the year. And then as winter approached, um, we were talking a little more and I was like, Hey, you know what, when are you thinking for something like that? Cause I'm either going to have to buy a winter car or I could start working on the WRX. He's like, Oh no, take the WRX. I don't want it in my driveway anymore. Um, so yeah. So now as you could probably tell by the beanie and the long hair and everything else, you don't see the now. big vape thing to the side for that too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but no, I, so that's my, that's the new thing I've been working on is a, the bug eye WRX, which has been super, super fun. This is the original turbo out of it, um, that he replaced way back in the day. But, um, but yeah, the thing has been amazing it's been super fun a couple times it's been driven in the snow um already did a lot of work on it he had like an engine light that's been on for a while for a fuel rich mixture thing 
um, I don't know why I said that so weird, rich fuel mixture, um, for quite some time. That's like a notorious bug eye thing, like a difficult thing to track down. Mm -hmm. So I replaced most of the vacuum system, um, fuel lines, everything like that. Finally tracked it down as a fuel pressure regulator. Um, but it's running great now. Right when that happened, the water pump went out. And so I had to do timing water pump and everything like that. Yeah. But, uh, but all no, the stuff you probably should do anyways. Right. right. So Especially now, on a tuned up high right, horsepower Subaru. Right. Because he's yeah. been, he was very like meticulous, keeping everything up to date, taking great care of it. And it was kind of at the next big service interval. Like that's where it was coming up on. And yeah. he just didn't, he wants to do that stuff with his Audi. He wants to upgrade right. the Audi. So he's like, hey, I don't want to do any of this stuff. Like this is something you can take the torch, go have fun with it. Yeah. Now. But, um, but yeah. So tell us a little bit about, um, like short list of the mods on that thing. So obviously yeah. you said the Cobb stage three, what does that mean? Like what are, what's done to it yeah. just from, cause a 2.0 yes. stock, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's the, it's the smaller engine. It's not the two and a half that came in the STI. Um, but it is, so the whole, the whole Cobb package, it's got the original access port one, which is really cool. So it's the one with the green screen on it. Yeah. Not the little guy right? yeah, yeah. that everybody's, yeah, no, it's everybody like, knows it's now. It's like a wide one with a dot major, like a green wider screen on it, but yep. it's, it's very funny. It looks like really like fast and furious yeah, feeling, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's got that. So it's, it's tuned to run 93 octane. Um, it's got the catless downpipe all the way through the muffler. Um, so it's a big, I think it's a three inch all the way back. Um, bigger turbo. I forget which one. It, I think it's a VF 39. I'm probably getting that wrong. There's a few that are kind of interchangeable with that. Um, but I mean, yeah, other than that, it's all like silicon hoses on everything. Mm -hmm. Um, K and N filter. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Oh, and then the, the transmission. So he, that's the cool story about this car. So he, yeah. he did all this tuning to it and he never like, like he did it cause he just wanted to enjoy the car, have a nice car. He, um, like this was his first car purchase that he was like getting something super fun for him something that he was like he had just started working um at the sheriff's office and so he's like all right like i have a good paycheck now and i'm gonna go get something fun yeah so he did this he put all these modifications in and uh so when he shortly after doing all these mods he was driving and i think he blew out third gear like completely stripped out third gear <laughs> and uh, he brought it into the dealership and they're like weird this was you know this shouldn't have happened but um like here, here's a warranty still at that point or i don't think it was i okay. think it was just out of warranty but he he ended up getting uh, a new transmission from Subaru to put in. So they got one shipped in, they installed it. Um, he was driving on it and the same thing happened. He blew out third gear again. And he's like, <laughs> he came back and he's like, okay, like, I don't want to keep doing this. This is yeah. very bad. Like it was at that point. It's then, not a cheap swap, especially no. to have Subaru do. Right, right. With a new Subaru transmission. Right. It's not like a junkyard. Hey, we did this in the garage type of thing. Exactly. Yeah. It wasn't like he found one on Craigslist for cheap and yeah. it. like it was supposed to be, this was supposed to be the one that lasted. So he, um, so after blowing that out, he, uh, he limped it home and he brought it back and he's like, okay. What can we do? Because like this is not or no, that time he didn't bring it to Subaru. He brought it to a performance shop mm. near to him and just said, like, okay, this is what happened. I bought a new transmission. This is nuts. Like, what would you guys recommend? And uh they the options were kind of you could get an STI transmission or what he opted to do, he got a cryo treated gear set. I forget who it's from, some rally, something. Um, but it's uh so basically I think first through third are all straight cut gears now. Mm -hmm. um, and then fourth and fifth are not, but they're all cryo treated and way stronger. So I think it's rated to handle. I think the paperwork said like five or 600 horsepower. So they're like, they got in the gear set. They're like, this is what we could do. It's going to cost a lot, but we can install this in that brand new Subaru gearbox that you just got. Put that in the car. And he's like, okay. But again, he's already nervous now. He's like, well, right. how long is this going to last me though? Like if I tune it anymore, is that going to be a problem? And he's like, mm, the gears are going to be around far longer than the car is. And he's like, okay, cool. Let's do it. <laughs> fair, so, fair. so yeah, but no, those are sweet. It's got a really... I think it's really cool. It I could could be annoying to people riding in the car, but in third gear, that whine yeah. that it has is really, really neat. Yep. Like very rally esque. Yeah. But um but yeah, it's got a nice and, and then uh stage yeah, and you like feel like you're Ken Block all of a sudden, right? You get, yeah, third, you get a third gear, it's like hey. <laughs> Yeah. Like, but um, this is it. yeah and then when we jump the, the railroad tracks yeah, or whatever yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah every time it's, it's got the yeah every time going up to any bump or anything you're like this these are meant to fly right, yeah, right. Fun. um the the clutch on it too is like a stage i think it's a stage two clutch but it's very stiff it's very weird i, I used to think that my Porsche clutch was very stiff. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, comparing the two, like I like I'd always say, oh, it's pretty stiff, stiff club. It's just kind of weird to drive. And then uh, going from the Porsche to the Subaru, it was very, I stalled it a bunch when I first started oh, driving yeah. it because it's very, like a very short engagement at the end. Like felt and like then, the first time learning stick again. Yeah, it was very weird. Like I still can't shift the thing great. Like it's very, it's taking a long time to adjust. But then I drove my Porsche after driving the WRX for a while and I was like, oh, this feels broken. Like it feels so <laughs> weird how light the whole push is on yeah. my Porsche. But no, it's awesome. So very, very fun car. Um, but super thankful to, I mean, it's, it's cool that it's, 
I just feel super honored because like it's my father-in-law. Like I'm not his blood son, but like we connect so much over cars. And like he's mm-hmm. had this in his family where he's got an old Dodge Coronet that he inherited from. I think it was his uncle gave it to him. Um, and he like there's a lot of these family connections with cars. He's got that MG2 in his garage. From, oh, yeah. Forget who that's from. But um, but he's got that connection. So to inherit something from him um, and have like history of working on it together and be able to do some more of that. Like I'm super pumped about it. Hi, Miley. There's a dog in the corner of the frame, if you can see it. Is she in there? I think she is oh. a little bit. If she puts her head... Oh, she's over here. She's probably... She wants to talk about which car is her favorite to ride in. Yeah. But anyway, so yeah. So that's my new thing. That's awesome. Um, been ripping around in the WRX. That's the that's the super, super fun winter car. Like, comparison-wise, car-wise for me, um, like, I've had... The fastest thing I ever had before this was the S6. Yeah. Um, and it was, like, 270-ish horsepower, um according to whatever the chip was but like probably weighed a thousand pounds more than this thing does and this is and body oh, oh long yeah. too long yeah. wheelbase yeah because that's yeah. i mean at that point it's the c4 chassis so that's like the a6s and everything and yep. this like that we say all the time the wrx feels like a b5 like it yep. feels like the size of a b5 um so it, it just feels like a completely different beast so this thing's just nuts like that now the that second it's... the third like yeah. pull is just ridiculous yeah that's that's like a <laughs> stick your head to the back of the seat yeah. kind of pull right yeah. it's like okay. oh especially and first like when we, we ran yeah. to the grocery store that other day and it's the first gear is just you get slammed hard into your seat it's and nuts. You're just like Ugh! well those <laughs> crazy flat fours too are just so torquey mm-hmm. on the low end too you know it's so different than what i'm used to mine's kind of a slow build mm. like it's not super torquey rated yeah. to start even with what it's got now yeah and it just slowly builds up to probably yeah. once it gets over three thousand rpm sure then it's like once it really kicks but sure. it's a little bit and it's heavier and yeah. all that stuff yeah, yeah. too. So it's just a little bit different of a feeling. But yeah, yeah it's, it's just like that more raw power kind of yeah. feeling you yeah. get out of it. Like that yeah. older yep. tuner car, you know? Yep. Yeah, no, it's super cool. So I'm I'm super thankful to be driving that thing around. But yeah, now suddenly I was always like, I always had only European stuff ever. And now I'm down to one. I only have the Porsche, the Jeeps and the garage. So now our driveway is always the Forester and the WRX. So all of yep. a sudden we're super family. Super family. And now I look like this, so... <laughs> It's, yeah, that's probably different since last episode too. Yeah, yeah. People are gonna not listen to like. Yeah, it's gonna come on and be like, Jake bought a Subaru. <laughs> yeah, In yeah, fact, that's how I start the episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Guess yeah. Guess who has Subarus now between yeah. the two of us? <laughs> yeah, right. But Ding. anyway, I spilled water. Nice. Sick. So we should since it's here. Yeah, and I have the Audi up. We yeah. should um line them up and see yeah. which like size wise what they're realistically like because i know yeah. the s3 is very very close in size like within inches i'm pretty sure i think i've so. looked at the specs yeah they're very um, close they feel like a same i mean even inside they feel like the same size car right it's very weird yep as the b5 like yeah if we put those i haven't been near one i guess yeah. lately but yeah. it'd be cool to compare those two yeah and we should compare it to the subaru yeah because the subaru seems a lot smaller for some reason but i don't know if it's yeah. just because there's less body because yeah. there's less yeah stuff yeah and sensors and like I all bet, that other stuff i think they're the same length i think my car is significantly narrower probably because like all new cars seem to keep getting wider and wider yeah. so that's probably what it is but, yep. but yeah so that's kind of what's new with me but you've got some new stuff too that makes yes. me really excited to see the difference between the wrx and your s3 yep but i don't want to spoil any of it so what's so going on with last your... we uh talked about the audi was probably those first couple episodes in uh tennessee right probably yeah and so at that point it was um apr stage one had the uh stage one ecu stage two ecu so stock it's about 292 horsepower i think with the stage one it's rated somewhere in the low mid 300s mm, i want to okay. say okay 350 to 370 range I'm, i could be wrong on that someone could fact check me um <sighs> The forms will for sure. That's yeah. like, that's the place to be told you're wrong about the horsepower yeah. of your car every <laughs> yeah. single time. Yeah, all somewhere the numbers we throw out here are just reporting off the top of our head. from APR. They say I think it's somewhere around the 350, 370 range with stage one. Um, and only other thing I had, I think, were the wheel spacers. Yep. I think uh, I had no. the f- did you do the wheel spacers? I think I did. Okay. I think I did when I did the plastic up on the wheels. Oh, you're right. And you're then right. Yep. um But you didn't have keep going. I don't want to keep going. <laughs> so it's a much longer list now. So <laughs> I actually should have written it down before this. I'm in severe credit card debt. (laughs) I will never financially recover. (laughs) Let me put that over top. Um, No, so I I switched actually over to... um, Oh, shoot. What's it? 034. (laughs) Oh, or 034, however you say it. I don't know. I uh, say so, 034. So 034 Motorsports. Um, I did a lot of research, a lot of reviews, okay. reading forums, watching people's YouTube videos, whatever, yeah. on, on the tunes. Okay. Um, I, I didn't really... know you switched to their tune. You didn't know that? No, oh. I didn't. I thought it was APR stage. No, so APR, um, at least at the time I was doing this, mm-hmm. they don't do stage two anymore, or at least they technically have the oh, product. that's right. But 
you have to have an APR um, downpipe. Oh, okay. To do it. So if you can find a used one, yeah. and then you, you got to give them like the serial number or code or whatever on the really? downpipe, then they'll sell you the tune. But really? I think it's an EPA thing. Oh, okay. So I think they're that not allowed sense. to sell it anymore. For, that makes sense. But on every, I mean, when we're all buying these performance parts, right. you, you it all says like for track use only. Right. Right. So, Which is all we're using it for. So. Because <laughs> <laughs> we live life a quarter mile at a time. And <laughs> every street is our track. Um. So, because I did the same thing with that's that. interesting. Yeah. So yeah. I did. Um, yeah, because everything says that you realize this cannot be used on the street. It has to be motorsport. Right. Use only. Even the basic like stage one tunes. Yeah. I think the only and I don't know if this is a shift that APR is making as a business. So I don't want to speak for them, but it seems like they're shifting more towards like, like the low, not like the race tunes. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Not yep. like the state. They're not. It doesn't seem like they're putting as much money into stage two, stage three sure. as they are in APR plus, which is gotcha. like below stage one gotcha. and stage one. Because gotcha. those are um, no hardware mods. Gotcha. Um, I believe it still maintains manufacturer warranty. Like gotcha. I think they match manufacturer warranty if you are APR plus. Interesting. I read something, okay. something about that on okay. the website. That makes so, sense though. So they basically want it, which would, that would make way more sense for them as a company to just go after people who get whatever an, an A4 and they just want to lock right. a little bit more kind yeah. of thing. Like that, you want to liven it up a little bit. Like yeah. you want to make it like how they couldn't necessarily make it from right. the factory. They don't want right. to overtune it or whatever. That makes sense. And, and a really, really safe baseline tune. So it, it makes sense. It seems like now more than ever, it's been really popular to, uh, lease cars or, or just own them yep. for a couple of years right yep. so you probably not, i mean some people do, yeah. do do all of the the downpipe and the exhaust yeah, and the yeah. springs and like all this stuff and then they got to switch it back yep. before they trade the lease yep. in so i have not done that but um it seems more common that people are doing that these days too like either leasing it or just buying stuff for a couple of years yep. that's true. um and then selling it trading it back in whatever for yeah. the next model so it makes a lot of sense if you want to do something like that to go with like apr plus for example where you can if that's true, I don't know if that, do your own research, but <laughs> if that's true that you can maintain the manufacturer warranty or at least they match it, right. do something like that. You can liven up the car a little bit. Right. Um, so that being said, I always said on the first couple podcasts we did that the the setup I had feels like how they should have made yep. the S3. Yep. I was wrong. <laughs> what I have now is how they should have made the, or the S3. Yeah. Um, so it is, I believe it is above the stock power um, specs of an RS3. Interesting. Now at this point. Okay. So. I'll go through the quick list, top of my head. Um, so I've got the, uh, so the 034 uh, Stage 2 93 Octane uh, ECU tune. I've got the, still actually the APR TCU tune. So oh, okay. I talked to them both about it. And of course, they both were like, oh, we'd prefer you have our thing. Mm, but yeah. I was like, hey, APR, you won't sell me Stage 2, <laughs> right? <laughs> so what am I supposed to do? <laughs> like, well, I'm search Facebook for a downpipe. And I was like, okay hey well wow. three four <laughs> they're like you're my man we got you so um so i still have the tcu i did notice at first a little bit of odd shifting okay like okay the, like it didn't quite line up or whatever gotcha but it seems to have learned oh cool learned that it's crazy that itself. they can do that yeah they can just sit and learn that so um so 034 stage two on 93 i've got the 034 um racing downpipe so gotcha. it's it's still catted oh okay just a high flow okay catted okay downpipe. that's cool so i'm probably not gonna be shooting flames anytime soon yep that's okay um obviously i have the resonator delete i had that last time too i think with yeah. stage one um i've got the 034 dynamic plus lowering springs so you don't notice it if you just were to look at it and yeah. not know that it's lowered you wouldn't know that it's lower yeah right i think it's, it's like though yeah i think yeah. it's like three quarters of an inch lower yeah. something like that so it just settles it down a little bit where you really notice it is in the cornering mm -hmm. so i know we didn't mm -hmm. do a ton of that You've only ridden in it once since it's stage two, right? Twice, I think. Okay. Yeah, I think two times. But the first time, I think we did a little bit more cornering. And you yeah. kind of like, it It just feels like it's on rails. Now. It just sits here. <laughs> like you can feel it in your in the seat, right? So if you're on the stock suspension, you feel this in a stock car, any car really, right? You're doing a hard corner. You feel like you're tipping from the top, mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. tipping over. You feel the body roll. And with these, and I guess any performance suspension parts, it feels like you're kind of slipping like you're almost leaning into the turn the yeah. other way yeah. so it feels like on your seat you're like slipping in this way so it feels really cool yep. doing hard corners yep. and stuff like that that's awesome um so what would be really interesting yeah see if we can do this again yeah is another tail of the dragon yes road trip sweet with the wrx yep with mine yep and racing see how we feel together yeah see how we feel i need new brakes before then i do too <laughs> oh cool I do too. yeah we'll it do a break episode i need new brakes i need new tires for the oh, power yeah. setup that's got now yeah I do so too. um okay so this is going to take forever to get through this list at this pace. <laughs> yeah so it's um 
So I'll tune down pipe, the springs. Um, I still have the spacers, of course. Yep. Um, I've got the intake from Integrated Engineering. I did not do the the carbon fiber cover, whatever. It's just kind of the open one. Um, and then ECS has a uh, turbo muffler delete. So basically, mm. is it's all just all smooth on the inside instead of the other one has a bunch of holes in it and gotcha. like restricts the a sound, bunch of restricts the airflow a little bit. Yeah. Gotcha. So that smoothed out quite a bit. I noticed a lot more low end between that and the downpipe okay. and the intake. Mm. There's just a lot more free flow. And then I think the only other thing on it is the ECS um, uh, diverter valve spacer, which mm. I kind of laugh at myself for a little bit. <laughs> it's not really a performance mod. Okay. It, what does I, it it's do? It's a spacer for the diverter valve. So the diverter valve normally connects to whatever it connects to sure. and it's flat this spaces it out a couple of millimeters and then has um like a vent oh. so it basically okay because you can do a blow off valve or a diverted valve yeah. right yeah. so you're either doing it's like you're either recirculating the air or you're blowing it off into atmosphere right so and the, a lot of cars need it to recirculate otherwise it'll jack right. up like a vacuum and all that kind yep. of stuff so that's what i know i don't know if all audis do but i think most mm -hmm. i think most modern turbo cars probably do that yeah they just recirculate the air yes. back into the intake i was like we do that which one <laughs> so what is, do yeah. you know what yours has mine it recirculates just, it does okay. yeah because a lot of wrx because it's right on the top like right on the intercooler it's mounted yeah i um, mean a lot of guys will put like a generic one on there and just vent out but then they'll get well, so like, that's where you get the cool and, aftermarket sound yeah. right that's yep. where you get the, like, the right. or whatever. that's more from the turbo spinning against itself right. right yeah so i can get mine to do that a little bit and i guess <laughs> i'm told it's okay but anyways um so i have that one too basically all it does is just increase the bluff sound mm -hmm. so it, cool. it basically goes 50 50 between at least how i understood it diverter and recirculator oh, okay recirculating okay so it bluff a little bit to sure. so hear more sound sure and then it recirculates the rest gotcha that's so, cool sounds great it sounds great. And it does the crackle I think that's thing everything. Now, which is pretty Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> I did the uh, crackle tune part. Of course, it's an option. I was like, uh, yeah, of course <laughs> I want to do it. So I still have the stock muffler. What I really like about uh, the tune and then just the car in general is that depending on which mode I'm in, I can change how yeah, it sounds. That's very so cool. Valves open, valve closed. And then in comfort mode with the tune, how 034 did it was in comfort mode, it doesn't do the crackles. Interesting. Okay. So if I want to be, you know, inconspicuous yeah. so I just drive around i don't want to be that guy right all right, the time right that i'm just like you know downshifting hard and yeah. popping and back and stuff like yeah. that i can put it in comfort mode i don't have to hear all of <laughs> yeah, that all the time good. now which mode do i drive in all the time oh we Sport know mode. we all know <laughs> every single time i saw your exhaust pipes they're pretty black right now <laughs> I, know. I know you can see where it comes out of mostly so so yeah that's pretty much everything so i think if i'm not wrong it's rated close to 450 at Neat. this point Oh, um, 450 yeah of course that's i haven't crazy. dynoed it so it's yeah. butt dyno i think yeah. it's about 450 it feels quite a bit faster that's crazy um i've only launched it once um <laughs> partially time um like not having a lot of time yeah. to it's usually it's just commuting and stuff yeah. like that so you i'm usually not always driving going somewhere right just doing so i'm not gonna be like oh i'm leaving my driveway <laughs> <laughs> you should did, did you see that the did porsche we, commercial yes, yes. yes. <laughs> i think it was top gear right they did a um no it wasn't or was it a porsche commercial? just a straight up porsche commercial that's I think, awesome. for the gt3 yeah, and the drive through and everything yeah it's like yeah, sitting I'm at not, the stoplight <laughs> i don't think i'm bold enough <laughs> just do that out out there yeah. but anyways so um it was partially not having a lot of time to do it but yeah. partially not wanting to grenade the transmission <laughs> yeah. i know it's strong i it, it can handle a whole lot more yeah. than yeah. i this is very mild still right. technically right as far as everything can, I can handle show you a third gear though that thinks otherwise <laughs> this right. should be fine yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah that technically should have been able to handle yeah handle it too so um but i did end up doing it once and it was um it was spinning all fours <laughs> That's awesome. all the way through first gear spinning all fours awesome. and then it shifted and with the shift a little bit of loss in power even though with the dsg sure. it hooked and then it yeah. poof, just took That's off That's awesome man. so i would love to do i know we have a video like the weekend after i bought it i think yeah in mexico oh when yeah we were doing the yeah, yeah. we did the launch control for yep. the first time yeah and then um <laughs> i would love to do <laughs> i'd love to do video to video like yeah the differences oh, in it because cool. we also have I mean, I still had the like dealer plates on and yeah. everything. Yeah. So we did the sound of the um, oh, launch yeah, control did. getting ready. That's right. So that we could probably do today. That we could do. I don't think yeah. we did that yet. We no, just did the revving with the pops and stuff. Yeah, we never did the, the whole thing. Yeah. We never did that. So that would be cool to do too. Just have those side to side and we can post that on Instagram, TikTok cool. or whatever. That'd be cool. We should show the sound sure. difference. So yeah. So yeah, no, that's, that's awesome. everything. That that's everything lot. going on with that. I, I did realize I forgot the whole fuel systems upgrade on the WRX too. So it's all the... Yeah. <laughs> it would have to be, right? Want, I have to do Lewis's car justice here. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, no, it's got like... It's watching that, it like STI it things. Yeah, he's, he's like, no, 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 no. But no, that's awesome, man. Yeah, our cars are... We can't... We just can't leave them alone, can we? we keep yeah. Doing stuff. And what's next? Maybe that's a good next conversation. What's well, next? So <laughs> here's the thing. 
Um, I have been, it's actually listed for sale. <laughs> I know we all have done this at some point in owning a car, right? You do, you take it, take it a while. You do a yep. bunch of mods to it, and then you're like, "What else is out there?" So I'm really not that serious about getting rid of it. Yeah. I do really like the car. Yeah. No, um, that's. I mean, that's the normal part too. I listed my sport wagon for sale like three times before I actually yeah. sold it because it was just like, eh. If somebody like wants to pay for it, then let's do it. And then like a couple takers or whatever. And then one guy got serious and I was like, nah, I'm not ready yet. <laughs> right. I pulled it down. Well, you put the feelers out but, there and you see what comes. You know, yeah. someone's basically the attitude I had with it is if someone's willing to overpay. Yeah. Maybe I'll... Dude, especially right now with all right. the stuff going on in the... So it's a little yeah. bit of a unique situation the last couple of years, yeah. inflation and the car market going crazy. Yeah. Like um, the car has gone up in value quite a bit since mm -hmm. I bought it. Mm -hmm. uh, so with what I owe against it, what I can sell for, it kind of would yeah. make sense. Um, so with that, I'd been debating a lot of different cars. Um, obviously, we had the... We had our baby. No, we didn't have our baby. Mm. <laughs> uh, I had. We're married, but it's not like that. Yeah. <laughs> Wife and I had our baby yeah. since then. So it turns out the rear seats in the Audi are um, not good for a baby seat. It is way too small. Yeah, we I don't can, think that's the target market for them. <laughs> I don't think so. No, it's kind of there. I think it's a sedan to call it a sedan. Yeah. Because yeah. there's not. I mean, we all rode in the back of it on the tail of the dragon trip and it yeah. was not comfortable. Yeah. Cannot no. fit adults back there yeah it's a back um, seat but barely <laughs> yeah but it also doesn't fit the baby seat unless i'm like oh, right up on the steering wheel really right i can like put my seat all the way up yeah and i can fit her back there and yeah, then yeah. i'm like right up there um or just has to do it on the other side so we found out it's that bad though like you have to be tight. pretty like pushed forward and yeah. the seat to get it yeah wow. either like the low you know the lower part i moves, guess because like, the, the seats forward. probably sit back yeah good ways so yep oh, yeah, so it can a baby car seat can fit in the middle mm. i don't know if that's that ideal or not i don't know yeah, I've heard both ways that, yeah. it, that it's I'm that sure it's, it's not, but it feels or weird. that it's not preferred. So yeah. we did it one time driving, put her in the middle yeah. just so we could all drive together yeah. again. Yeah. Um, but it's just not ideal. So yeah. I've been considering some other options. I did. Um, Raptors are something I've always yeah. liked. I'm not a huge truck guy. Um, I think everybody likes Raptors, though. Yeah. Right. Pretty well, much. Except every for like hardcore fanboys of whatever <laughs> truck brand they like. Well, and like everybody like I've, a truck is so freaking practical. Like it's yeah. so nice to have a truck. So yeah. like it's, it's a good thing. Like that seems to check a lot of the boxes up. It's still pretty fun. I mean, it's a Ford. Right. So, so the Raptor but. checks <laughs> the fun box, right? So yeah. and this is a 2018 plus is kind of what I was looking at. So it's twin turbo V6, 450 horsepower. Nice. So it's got a lot of similar, whatever yeah. I get turbo noises. Yep. I get about the same amount of power, yeah. like twice amount of weight. Yeah. Um, it's got, you know, it's paddle shifted. 10 speed automatic that's so crazy like that's kind of cool uh it's got tons and tons of space um i actually do have a truck but yeah it's only a two-door mm. and a long bed yeah and it's rear-wheel drive right so i had to drive it the other day and i i barely made it out of the <laughs> that it, everything was plowed but it, you know the snow kind of packs down yeah. on the ground yeah well it's and not like you have snow tires or nice tires on it it's they're just pretty decent though are they're, they they're like meaty tread all terrains yeah oh, okay yeah okay. so they're decent they're that's not nice. snow specific no but um they have tons of tread left like they're oh, really, okay. really healthy tires <laughs> still didn't help you though it did not help at all it's so long too like i wasn't like we all know when we're trying to spin around and when we're not trying to spin <laughs> yeah. around i was just i wasn't even thinking about it i was just driving so i would like you know let off basically rolling through turns because i knew yeah. it wasn't great and yeah. it would just be like all right well Sweet. i guess i'm going the wrong way on this road. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> just take me around and i remember it was uh like two streets down yeah and one of the neighbors was out um shoveling yeah, yeah and he just like looks and sees me go by and then i'm like spinning and then i'm facing him yeah and i'm just like <laughs> and i almost slide it like right up onto somebody's front yard oh like right into you know they have the big yeah. stones outside with the house numbers yeah, yeah. i almost went right into that but i looked i looked when i came back and you can see my tire tracks like sweeping right by the curb like all of the nice. snow is like pushed so that was good so anyways a lot of reasons i was considering it so i did go drive one of course because nice, nice. anytime we yeah we car guys we we have an idea and then we shop for them non-stop and research them non-stop yep. you know everything about it so yep. I know a lot about the raptor if anybody's interested nice. um and then i went and drove one and man those are fun to drive <laughs> it's not wrong with the power and everything dude it's so much fun because yeah all i know about this so far is that you did that like i don't know anything about the experience yet so i'm excited yeah. i've been wanting to hear this whole story it was so much said fun it was a pretty interesting experience yeah and so then, i found one locally okay it was an 18 i think it had like 50 something thousand miles so i want to be somewhere i don't want to downgrade technology either because mm. i really like having car play i like 
like remo- my remote ruins, start. Yeah. I would like remote start. Yeah. Um, I like heated seats. These have heated and cooled seats. They cool. have the infotainment system. Really, it has cooled seats too. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. In the back too, I think it's got at least heated seats. Yeah. In the back. That's cool. And the back is like bigger than the front. It's like literally. Like they the guy at the dealer I think called it like a couch on wheels in the back. <laughs> Just this big bench seat. That's awesome. And like kind of bucket seats looks yeah. super comfortable. Yeah. But tons and tons of storage. I really like that. Um. The thing is, though, it is well, we the size of the Audi, right? It's pretty mm-hmm. tiny. Mm-hmm. The size of the Raptor is like an, in a normal car spot. It is like almost touching the yellow lines <laughs> on both sides. It's so wide. Oh my gosh. So that was way different because I'm already not good at driving. My my truck's pretty thin, so it's just yeah. a 1500 long bed. Yeah. Um, that long eight foot bed, bed makes the geometry of everything weird. Yeah, like parking and stuff, stuff sucks, yeah. but that was about just as long because it's the extended cab and then a, mm. whatever five and a half foot okay. bed, okay. something like that. So super wide. Um, so like figuring out where to be in the lane and <laughs> like I was just downtown yeah, driving yeah. it and then I took it on the highway and then yeah. came back um, and all of that stuff like figuring out where yeah. to not like go over curbs yeah, yeah. even though you kind of want to when you're in the yeah. Raptor because you're like you watch the videos and everything like <laughs> you can literally just like jump the thing from the factory like you look under the wheel wells you know it's got I don't know truck stuff so I'm gonna mess this up but it's got all the cool adjustable shocks yeah, yeah. and like yeah. I don't know it looks like a uh what like a trophy truck or yeah, whatever yeah. like it just yeah. looks like that yeah it looks like the baja ones that like the ones yeah. they're doing on tiktok right now for the drop test like where the have you seen yes. that let's fork it up yep. and then drop it that's yep. uh, the, have you seen the video of the guy jumping the raptor from the factory because probably don't when you get one. Oh really <laughs> <laughs> he's like it's like a dude yeah it's, it's i'll try to find the video and post it in but basically he like jumps it through the air and then he he's like nose heavy and he lands oh, no. first and all the airbags go off. Oh. And he like he, I think he blew like a shock or something and it's like sitting down in the front. And they should like have a little like you know the little the thing on Jeeps you flip the visor down yeah. and it's like tip warning. Yeah, yeah. Like don't go fast on yeah. turns or whatever. Yeah, yeah. They should have that for the raptor like yeah. pulls down. It's like, like take it easy, man. <laughs> like, yes, it looks like a trophy truck. Yeah. It kind of is yeah. it's not actually though you still yeah. have airbags yeah. you still have all this stuff yeah it's well still they is- should just be like don't jump it over five feet like you can do yeah, five right but don't go crazy yes yeah. <laughs> and then we could test that there we go <laughs> how high can you really jump a stock where's raptor? the break point <laughs> yeah i probably could go to the dealership and test drive it again <laughs> i don't think they'd appreciate it well can i don't you? know what how, happened so how did this end okay so, you, so it didn't go great um, so the car the driving the car went great driving you was like fun them. is yep. that you you think it's something you're going to pursue would you go look I at one of the v8 know. ones no you don't know oh, one of the v8 ones yeah they just so those i don't know what year they ended i think it was like like pre car play and pre all this other yeah, stuff though. i think it was like 15 okay. maybe somewhere around there okay um so it'd be cool the 6.2 is is an awesome motor mm-hmm. and it sounds awesome yeah that's the thing you'd, i'd miss yeah from if i'm getting a truck with a high horsepower like you'd think you want that v8 sound yeah. you want it to sound like the other truck right yeah yeah but i don't know i think i would miss all the tech because yeah. those are like at or below what my car is worth gotcha. right now so it'd be pretty easy if i'm trading straight up for somebody sure doing something like that or selling it and buying that it's going to be same yeah. payment and all that type yeah, of stuff yeah. um but i don't think i can get past the technology even on this one so this was 18 my audi is a 17 mm-hmm. it still felt like dated yeah which was funny well it's got that like the european thing like where like european cars are always wait for whatever weird reason they're always way yeah. ahead like technology wise yeah it's what a lot just of like the is. it's like the refinement of the build like yeah. the build quality and they're yeah. i think they're built great like mm-hmm. i don't they're built for tough right? that's what they say <laughs> i think they're built really really good but it's just different when you go from like a uh european sports yeah. car yeah to like an american truck oh, yeah talk about know? two completely different audiences yeah. between those two cars right. <laughs> yeah so it you know i felt you started up the bald eagles fly all that sort of stuff you know it's it was great yeah um and i drove it it's got the selectable two-wheel drive all-wheel drive i was oh, trying sure. to figure out the all the modes are adjustable from the steering wheel which was like a school bus steering wheel <laughs> compared really? to the audi yeah. i have the, at the flat bottom leather wrap yeah, you know yeah. it's all like motorsports yeah. or whatever so that one had the paddles too but it felt like you had to go way back and the paddles had like an inch of travel really? which is so different and then yeah, yours is just a little wheel. like <laughs> yeah you can buttons. i've accidentally shifted from like like i've accidentally double shifted because i've like twitched when i've hit it I hit <laughs> it twice crazy. or whatever and yeah. i've du- like double down shifted yeah, or yeah. double up shifted or whatever oh so yeah, double down that wasn't great bad. <laughs> so it was a lot of fun it's got the you know off-road beadlock wheels big yeah, yeah. i don't know 35s or something i think yeah. is on it like yeah. it's it's and like cool. smaller like smaller rims in that yeah too, right? they must be 15s like, or 17s or yeah, something yeah. like that yeah i love that ones. look looks really neat so i did two-wheel drive most of the time the transmission is super clunky just compared to weird the european like is it a my dsg DSG? or is it just like a regular transmission i don't know okay like, That'd be sure. it's shiftable so i don't know if that means it's no, because like a, a regular one dual, would be. I don't know if it's like a dual clutch yeah. gearbox or anything yeah. like that. That's what be curious sure. about because those usually feel, once you drive a dual clutch, it makes everything yeah. else feel really it, I'll say it didn't feel like it if okay. it is, but that could be just, 
how they do it versus yeah. how Audi does well, it. the level of tune that yours is too. Right. It's already tuned so much tighter. Like if yeah. I were to drive a stock S3, I'm sure I'd be like, wow, this thing, this DSG shifts right. slow. Right. But um, it did seem like, hey, you could check on it. Yeah, it did seem see. like it shifted really slow um, and clunky. I put it in the sport mode once and it okay. like almost, it felt like it almost knocked me out. It felt like you were gunning it in the Subaru <laughs> when it shifted. Because, you know, it goes, and then shift to the next year it's like jeez what are you doing dude why does anybody want to shift like this so i did read a lot of reviews Can't on that was a uh knock against my shift yeah, right. or... i either have um external combustion engine now <laughs> or or it's just how they no, bought the transmission because you're like it's like how you shift in the wrx like horrible you know oh i see what you're saying i see what you're saying oh, i thought you meant i threw a rod oh no. um, so shifted super hard um i forget where i was going with that i drove it in two-wheel drive yeah, most of the you're time you're just talking about the drive um I can't I find forget it. It's like gotta... the power to rebuild. I'm so used to just being able to punch it through turns, no problem. Yeah. yeah. And my car just sticks. Yeah. So I was doing we have a lot of roundabouts in this mm. area of Green Bay I was going to. And um it was just like just sliding a little bit, but okay. really controllable. Oh, cool. Like not like drifting, drifting, yeah. but you could just you just feel the back end slide out a little bit yeah. and you kind of power through it. Yeah. So that was in manual mode. So you could just keep it in the same gear. Yeah. Just kind of you know, like nice. keep, keep the back out and then it comes back together really nice. smooth. Like didn't feel like it was gonna get away from me or anything. Yeah. So cool. It was a really good time driving it. So, anyways, I contacted contacted them and said, Hey, I want to drive this Raptor. Never drove one before. I'm thinking about trading an Audi S3 and then this old 04 Ram. They're like, Cool, come and drive it. Mm-hmm. I'm look at it. This yeah. was like at 9 a.m. and I went there at like 11:30 or something sure. like that. Um, so I get back. It was bright red. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Not really my style. That's how I knew you didn't buy it. Yeah, <laughs> I, was yeah, like, yeah. I don't think you'd buy it. It's just a not my style. Car. Yeah. It did have the carbon fiber package on the inside. Cool. I didn't like that. The cool. trim and stuff. But it's yeah. it's again, it's like going from a European car to an American car. Right. Like right. it was placed weird. Like yeah. they had carbon fiber going down like this under like the door handle. I'm like, why wouldn't you just do it on the trim? Right. You know, like <laughs> put it in a normal spot and they had like That's one weird. stripe going down on the dash, not like all the way across. Oh, weird. And then they had like a tiny digital dash and then like analog gauges okay instead of just like a digital oh thing, weird like the center's digital yeah like we'll if throw you a picture wanna, in the thing yeah maybe. like if you want to turn your heated seat on for example yeah. no that was a button what was one thing it might have been the air something with the something that you would think this should probably be a button or a switch okay. was digital kind of like oh. dad's truck is right oh, there's a yeah. few things on there that's like yeah. this would be easier if it was a, sure. just a button or yeah. a switch um, and then some of the things that you're like, I wish this was digital. Mm. It was just like analog. Oh, weird. So some of that stuff was kind of weird. And I don't know if it's just preference and what I'm used to. Yeah. Probably that's yeah. most of it. Um, but anyways, I get back and, um, you know, I'm just, I'm just chatting with the guy. I actually knew another guy who was there. So I was chit chatting with, with him a little bit while the other guy I had met was finishing up with somebody else. And he came over like ready to, mm -hmm. it's like, so why don't we go in my manager's office? Yeah. Like, let's. What did I say? Manager's office? Like slurred that like crazy. <laughs> Why don't we go to my manager's office? Like, let's let's get a deal going. Yeah. I was like, well, you know, I don't think red's the one. I wanted yeah. to drive it. Yeah. I'd never driven one before. I wanted to look at it, right. I wanted to feel it, drive right. it, stuff like that. And he was like, Really? I wish I would have known that before. Turn around, walked right away. Really? I'm like, you didn't hear the part where I say I would really like a black or a gray one. And I know Dude, there's some it? coming. So you just walked away. That from was me. it. That was that. That was wow. it. Wow. I was like, Cool. So I'm in sales. Like this, right. that's what I do. Right. So I'm like, first of all, don't be <laughs> mad that I didn't. Don't be mad that you. First of all, that you couldn't close me. Right. I do like red a little bit. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean. Right. If you're, if you, be a little convincing, probably right. wouldn't have gone with it anyways. But no, but like um, not to close you out there. Like say a second thing. Well, like, here's the thing. Like don't be mad that golly. I didn't. That I didn't buy it. Yeah. If you didn't ask me if I was gonna buy it before I even drove it. Right. Like I said, I want to drive this car. Right. I'm considering doing this. Right. And, you know, say, okay, Man. are you going to be ready to do that today? For right. example, right? right? It's just a real easy, not, right. you don't have to, be, I know people outside of the car industry don't like people in the car industry. I'm yeah. not in the car industry. Yeah. Yeah. But like, I get it. I'm in, I'm in sales. I understand yeah. it. Like right. there's, there's easy closing, soft close questions, right? right. Are you going to be ready to do this today? Right. It's a really easy one. Right. I could have said, no, that's still okay. Right. Maybe I'm ready to do but it then next week. Then you set his expectation on like, exactly. all right, where well, I have to plant the seed for you to when you come back saying, is yep. this the one or do we need to keep looking to like right. show, hey, I'm, I'm going to keep working with you through this yep. to make him your guy. But yep. he's just- Or go pull away. Up. Man. Even if I was like, yeah, I kind of like it. Are you sure red's the right color for you? Yeah. Something like that yeah, to be yeah. like, Make to it push it away. Like so then I want it. I got to chase it more, right? Yep. And it seems like something I want more. Yeah. So anyway, it's just not a great experience. That's crazy. Um, I won't name them, obviously, yeah. but no. probably not going to go back there. Oh, no, yeah. Um, That's really discouraging because it's yeah. like if he's if they've got a Raptor, it's like, hey, if you guys could get, the, it, it would be nice to have somebody that you could say, hey, this is what I wanted. So just right. go look for that and then yep. you got me, you know, yep. but. 
that's crazy you know, my side a little bit too i get it it's partially my fault yeah too of not being a thousand percent ready and still taking that's the time to go do process, something though. but i gotta i'm not gonna just no i'm not gonna go to i won't name those either <laughs> those those websites you just <laughs> buy it blind right yeah. and it just shows up on right. the back of a, a blue truck <laughs> It's too close. I, I'm not going to do something like that. Yeah. Like I'm, I have to drive it. I have to feel it. I have to yeah. see multiple ones. Yeah. How do you feel about this? Really Cause I, we were looking cause like uh, we, and, and I also think like you were totally like, yeah, whatever. Maybe you should have gone in saying like, Hey, I'm not buying today. I just want to look, but right. like it's part of the process. Everybody looks at a lot of cards before they buy one car. It's a big yeah. commitment. Like some people, I don't know how people like, I know people who will go into a car dealer. I'm like, Hey, I think I need a new car today. And like the salesperson will just guide them through the entire thing. Well, and they're and like, not know oh, what they're I, looking for. Yeah. And like, oh, I that guess I'm getting the Bronco away. today. And yeah. like, they don't, we were, uh, when we were negotiating, we were getting our Forester. We looked at three that day. And uh, one was at a Ford dealership. We were sitting there. And this lady, like, it was nothing. Against, the salesperson wasn't doing anything wrong, but just it shocked me that she, it, she wasn't, it was her and her husband were in there and they weren't. They didn't have any care at all of what they got. They just had a car. They kind of wanted something new. Didn't even know if they wanted an SUV or car. They just drove a whole bunch of stuff during the day. Mm. And it was just like kind of up to, I don't, I don't buy anything that way though. Like that joke, it freaked me out a little bit. Right. I was like, dude, well, how? You do, you research and maybe we're just weird. <laughs> oh, do, we are. <laughs> you just do, you figure out, an, an idea comes to mind. Yep. You figure out kind of the ballpark of what yeah. you want. You do some research to see what other people are talking yeah. about, what you like the most. Yeah. And then you find one that matches that roughly. Yeah. And then you go take a look at it and yeah. see if it's actually something yeah. that you want. We got to go drive stuff. Like I had right. to go drive like a few, like a lot of different stuff. We went and drove. We didn't even know. I mean, like the Forester. We drove like the Outback. We drove an old Forester, a newer Forester. Right. Like, try to figure out. But you knew you wanted like landed. a newer Subaru SUV. Yeah. Just figure out what's yeah, the most yeah. comfortable. That's true. Before what's, that, we rolled it down like that. the most. So yeah. we had like four models we were looking at. And then when yeah. we did that, we were like, okay, it's worth it to get this You one. weren't just like car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Know? Yeah. But like the um, the blue car service, like, is that something, <laughs> would you ever consider doing that? I don't that? know if I would. Because it feels really risky to me. I guess it depends on the car and yeah, why sure. I'm buying it. Sure. If it's like a, just a, it's never just a daily though. No, huh? it's not. It never is. I was <laughs> thinking like some, I guess it makes sense for some people if they're just like, I know I need a a sedan yeah. for less than $15,000. Yeah. I think it's like, just, it's and they such a cool, like it's cool service. I just don't totally. know if I could ever do it. Cause there's like just I'm, a lot of, there's a lot more variables to yeah. cars than, right. and I know, so those, the company, there's more than one company who does it. So I don't think we're yeah. on to, to say anything yeah. specific, but um, the companies that do that, at least from what I've seen offer, a like trial period kind oh, yeah. of so you technically do you buy yeah. it it's delivered yeah but then you have i don't know if it's seven days or something like that i think it's longer or, i think it's like 30 like i think they give time. you a long time to like that's a really long go time. try the car out and like you if you don't just, like it you can go back on it and yeah that's pretty smart i think tactic. it's i think it's a time in a miles oh okay difference too because you can't go like otherwise you could buy it <laughs> take a, a three thousand mile road trip right like yeah, i don't really want the car anymore <laughs> like, but well, I it's think a different car now they might it's kind of cool too like they might be that kind of company that says for the few people that would take advantage of it, it's easier for us to just have that issue than it is to say, to set strict rules around it. Like, I don't think they put that many mm. restrictions on it. I think they let it be, Hey, we're here for you. So we're taking yeah. it because their whole, all of their pitches to doing this are, we're taking the complexity out of buying cars and stuff. But I don't know. It's just like, it just, I, I, I don't know. Like even the, the Subarus that we looked at, like one of them, we found the trunk button was jacked up, but like in no, none of the photos, nobody knew it was a thing till I opened the trunk right. and saw it. And I was like, Hey, that button shouldn't be pushed inside. Well, not the a lot of people are going to be, as thorough as yeah. you looking to buy it yeah. you know if it's not and th nothing wrong on dealers no. but when they're taking something in on trade or they're buying off auction or whatever like yeah. they're they want it to be clean they want to make sure it's mechanically sound and they want right. to be able to market it and make as much money right. as possible that's right. the whole point right so they're not going oh let's make sure every single button right. works i'm sure right. they check stuff right. but it, it is takes you going enough. in to yeah. notice that stuff yeah yeah i don't know though it's it seems like a cool service like we the last when we were looking for the forester i was it was one of those that i thought well this is the kind of car it's the first time I knew all the features I wanted. So I was just buying a car to fit that. Mm -hmm. So I was like, well, this is probably the first time I could buy something on like some, a service like that. The right. first time I could say, I want this and this and this, and I need it to be this color. Go find me one. Right. And so we found a couple on there and the price, I mean, the prices of everything were crazy when we bought it, but they were reasonable, mm -hmm. but it was, there was something still that I was like, I just want to go look just at one. A little yeah. Wrong. yeah. At least weird. go drive it. And then you're yeah. there and you find one that you like and you're like, I might as well yeah. just buy this one right. rather than go. And then also with buying a car, like if you're like making that transaction, you want to drive it away too. Right. You don't want to be like, all right, well, 
<laughs> oh man, it'll Could be you here in a like, week or yeah, whatever. Boop, all right, my car gets delivered yeah. next week. Guess I'll wait. Just, <laughs> yeah. I was like, you're not gonna want the car by then, <laughs> dude. Imagine though. Okay, this is why we should never do this though. <laughs> is if we ever did that and ordered a car, can you imagine how many parts would be waiting for that car when it showed up? Because you'd be, be like, perfect. Close that tab. Okay, so <laughs> no, you just go tuning. <laughs> you just go check out next step. Check out next step. Check out next step. Check out. <laughs> let's have everything show up. You just keep your card today. out because you're just cruising through <laughs> right. that thing today. You're going through all of it, but. Cool, man. That's not, well, so yeah. one thing, actually, before we yeah. leave that topic, one yeah. thing I like about those services is yeah. they buy cars too. Yes, that is and really they cool. they offer like very realistic offers. Very, like if yeah. you do like Kelly Blue Book, what's my trade-in yeah. for my car? And you're, yeah. and you're honest about the condition yeah. on there. Their, their process for that too, I've yeah. gone through it a few times just to see right. like, hey, what'll they, yeah. what'll they give me for this car? It's I did it for super all my reasonable. cars. Yeah, just to I check it out. Yeah. Yeah. I, probably saw, I think I saw a TikTok about it or something. Yeah. People were like flipping cars. Well, it's on cars the forums all the time. I don't know if it's yeah. on your pages, but like the Volkswagen group I was on. Because like it was cool too because they didn't, they really easily could have during like the middle of the pandemic when there was, or the end of the pandemic when there was the crazy chip shortage stuff and car prices right. were crazy. They really easily could have said, nah, we're still going to pay you know, like Kelly Blue Book and that's it. But they, it seemed like they responded to that and their prices went up a lot. Really? Like, yeah, a lot of guys were selling oh. their car. A lot of guys were saying they sold their car for more than they paid for it originally because they were like letting the market dictate what they were willing to pay for it. So it seems sure. like they're, you know, like they always say like, oh, fair market price or whatever. But like they right. actually were. It seems like they were doing a really good job of that. Yeah. But well, it seems yeah, very cool. reasonable. I've ran through it a few times just to see yeah. what estimate. And it's usually, it's usually like valid for a few days. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's not a bad thing to check. Just yeah. toss it in there. I think you just oh, need yeah. your license plate or VIN. Yep. And then it fills in most of the information. Yep. And then you can see they give you the yeah. offer, obviously pending the condition yeah. and stuff. But oh, I yeah. thought that's a cool, kind of cool thing they do too. And that's how yeah. they get most of theirs. Right. You that's know, how they build they buy them like that. Yeah. Or they just flip that's those in an auction if it's something they can't sell. Because they're super, I don't think they sell stuff, most of them anyway, don't sell stuff older than like 2015 or 16. Like right. they're very picky about what they'll yep. do. But they'll buy anything. But mm. um, but no, those are cool. And definitely like if you're considering selling a car, like check there first if it even if it, it, if it takes hurts. the hassle out of dealing with like having five or six people come look at your car and then all the like will you take seven grand lower than what you're asking <laughs> or for it messages like, like 65 is this available oh my gosh on yeah. facebook yeah you're although like, i send a lot of those myself probably <laughs> i always change it up if i'm gonna ask that yeah like hey kyle yeah. I like the car. Yeah. I was just curious if you still have it. Yeah. Rather than like, how is this available? Yeah. Is this, you yeah, know, but how many, those. how many, whatever variant you use, how many of those do you send out there that like, yeah, it is. And then you get to the message again. And you're like, I don't need this. And then you <laughs> just, the time they respond. You're like, I don't actually want <laughs> this anymore. Yeah, never mind. Um, but most of those I see yeah. have it right in the ad. Like, yeah. Will not respond. <laughs> yeah. to, is this available? Do you ever, so if so, it's up, it's here. <laughs> do you ever respond though to see if they will? I do that. Like if I'm looking at something and I'm not even interested in it, but they're like, oh, will just not for respond fun? to, is this available? I'm <laughs> just like, is this available? Well, and then they respond, yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> yeah. Well, if you're in, um, I'm in a lot of different uh, car for sale groups too. Oh, yeah, yeah. And people will post, like share their ads yes. to the group. Yes. And it like says that in there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's every other comment at least like oh is this available oh is this available yeah. oh, is, or like i won't take a dollar under this price and then people will offer like a dollar under yeah. or two dollars under Dude, or whatever or, or like all the car groups that they'll post like something for sale somebody's like i got a dumb dumb sucker for you He's yeah, like, right. oh, dumb dumb sucker plus two cents yeah. like, like cheeseburger and a firm handshake <laughs> yeah. take it now they just start the bidding there it's yeah. awesome but awesome man well uh i think that kind of covers us for what we wanted to yeah, get through I think for episode so. nine yeah, here a but lot of change since uh man i can't believe it's been since august since we did nuts. this that's I can't crazy this long again yeah so but that's the plan back into do it. we want to share much about plans for this year i know we talked about every, so every week episodes are going to be coming out yeah. it's gonna be awesome yep um we're gonna do a lot more video content a lot more yep. consistent social stuff yep i'm um, trying to get out to especially once the weather warms up we're going to get out to some uh like a lot more car show events stuff like that yeah share more share more of that but also just be more a part of the community around here yep. i think the the Wisconsin car scene um, is it's very weird because I feel like it's really, really active in certain areas. Right. Um, and yep. there's some really interesting cars that are out there. Like there some but... really niche groups. Yeah. And then some really general yeah. groups, too. So there's a lot of stuff to do. So tons of car shows. Yeah. Um, I would love to do some track events this year. Yes. I think we'll probably both need breaks before yeah. we do something like that. <laughs> we'll need to do it kind of a lot. Before <laughs> yeah, we do that, we'll but... do just a quick run. Yeah. One through and make yeah. sure that everything works good. Yeah. But I think that would be. That'd yep. be some cool stuff to post up too. Yeah, that'd be so. sweet. But yeah, if you guys have suggestions or if you have anything, uh, any any clips or anything you want to submit, we've got some cool uh, some video series we're going to be doing um, as part of the episodes too. But 
but yeah, that's kind of the that's kind of what's new with us and the new stuff going on. Sorry, dog is just over here. Another floating <laughs> in the hair. I, I, I don't like know if it comes through the, the camera, car. but you can just see it like yeah, floating, it's just through floating the in here. Yeah, but um, but yeah, that's kind of what's new. Like we said, Tyler will be joining us in the future on some other episodes. He's got some stuff going on in his life right now. But um, but yeah, that's kind of where we're at for now. Sweet. So. Yeah, I don't want to tease anything from next week's episode. It's yeah. going to be exciting. So you should join for it. <laughs> that's but a teaser anyway, right there. That's it. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. Um, yeah, that's what we got. Cool. Thanks for joining us.